Hello and welcome to this Wednesday's Bible study. Today is 31st of March 2021 and it happens to be the last day in this month. And today our Reverend will be rounding up the teaching that we started uh, earlier this month, which is the miraculous. And as I always say, each week we always get new testimonies from those that have been getting before they get more. And those that are, are just listening, even those that listened last week, we still get testimonies and we give all glory to God. Paradventure, this happened to be the first time you will be meeting with this teaching, the miraculous. One thing about God is there is no time that is too late. He is always right on time. And whatever it is that looks like a mountain before you today, be ready because all of them will be level ground. And you will experience your own miraculous today. It doesn't matter whether you have been experiencing it before now or you just want to start. One thing that is certain is that today your miraculous starts. And today I want us to open our Bible to the book of Philippians. Okay, I welcome those in our Kuala church. Uh, they are sitting there they are seated at the moment say so welcome to today's service and i welcome those from akura church and every other members lagos church i welcome you also and everyone joining us from all around the world i say welcome to today's bible study promise to be an amazing one and as we always know our reverend is fully prepared to give us that word and that word which your life needs you will get it today in the name of jesus so let's open our Bible to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, as we start today with prayer of thanksgiving. Philippians chapter 4. Now, this one is just like a little admonition and what we should be doing, even though if you have still been uh, expecting your own miraculous. Chapter 4, beginning from verse 4. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, this is the part that I want us to notice. Verse 6 and 7. He said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Today, I want you to prepare your heart because when you give thanks, the, you experience the peace of God. Even in the, when there is uh, tribulations, trials, you just realize that you are at peace. You are at peace. And the peace of God does not just come in when nothing is happening, but it comes in more, or you experience it more when there is storm around you. So today, I want you to open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord because he is God and he has prepared everything for you. You know, Jesus said, he said, in this world, we have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And his word is coming to us today from his son, the miraculous. So I just want you to open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord because today that word that your life needs is coming to you. So just open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you. I give you praise and glory, Lord. I worship you. Lord, we bless your holy name this moment. We thank you. We adore you. We bless you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for this this day. We thank you for today's Bible study. We thank you for the great and amazing things which you have planned for us today. That we give you praise and glory. Open your mouth wherever you are and begin to worship the name of the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you. It's the month of the miraculous. Today is the last day for you to be here. Right now, it's not an accident. It is what God has planned, what God has prepared for you. And I want you to know that today those miraculous things that you need, those places that you need, the miracle of God in your life. As the word of God come out from God's son, it will come and enter your life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord. Thank him even for the privilege given unto you to witness, to be here at this time. I can assure you that you are in the right place at the right time, listening to the right word. Open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord. For preparing these, for castrating these just for you, just for you. Open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord. That it will bless your whole 
holy name, Lord, we give you praise. We thank and adore you. We give you praise and glory, O Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for the great and mighty things which you are set to do today. By your word, Daddy, we give you praise, O Lord. We bless your holy name for the miraculous. Thank you. Thank you for the miracles, for the miracles that I've been experiencing since the beginning of this teaching. Thank you for the miracles that we'll start experiencing again today on another level. We give you praise and glory. Open your mouth and worship the name of the Lord. Daddy, we thank you. We adore you. We bless your holy name, Lord. We bless you. We worship you. We thank you because you are God. We thank you because you are King. We bless your holy name, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Thank him. Begin to thank him wherever you are. I want you to begin to thank the name of the Lord. If you can stand up wherever you are, I want you to be on your feet and begin to worship the name of the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you. Daddy, we worship you. We bless your holy name. Lord, we thank and adore you. We give you praise, O Lord. We bless your holy name, Lord. We thank you. We adore you. We bless your holy name. Open your mouth and worship him. Open your mouth and worship him. That we give you praise. We give you glory, O Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the miraculous in the beginning of this month. Thank you for the miraculous. That we worship you. We bless your holy name for your word. Thank you for opening our eyes of understanding. We worship you. We bless your holy name, O Lord. We give you praise and glory. We thank you. We thank you because you are God. We thank you because you are God. Because every time we gather here, every time we come here to listen to your word, that we get sink into our heart and we experience the physical manifestation. Lord, we give you praise and glory. We worship your holy name, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for today's service. Thank you for the great and mighty things which you're set to do today. Thank you because our coming here today will be an amazing one again. We give you praise and glory, Lord. We worship you. Open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord. By adventure, you are in the public transport, wherever you are. By adventure, you are in the church, you are in your sitting room, your bedroom. I want you to open your mouth and begin to worship the name of the Lord. Say, Father, I thank you. I give you praise, O oh Lord. Blessed be unto your holy name forevermore, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. Even for your word that is coming to us today. We bless you, Lord, everlasting Father. We give you praise and glory, O oh Lord. We worship and adore you. We lift our hands up to you. Wherever you are, I want you to lift your hands unto the Lord. I want you to raise your hands higher and begin to say, Father, I thank you. I praise you, Lord. I bless your holy name. There is none like you. Ancient of days, we worship you. We thank you. We adore you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you for today's teaching. We thank you for the great and mighty knowledge. Thank you for the impartation, O Lord. Thank you for those great things which you're set to do today. We worship and adore you. We bless your holy name, everlasting Father. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Right now, I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare that in the name of Jesus today, again today, my eyes of understanding will be enlightened in the name of Jesus. By your word, I receive light and I receive life in the name of Jesus. As I'm here today, I receive light and I receive life from your word. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray that in the name of Jesus today, I receive light and I receive life. In the name of Jesus, as your word come to me, it manifests itself in my life. In the name of Jesus, it manifests itself in my family. It manifests itself in my job, in my business. In the name of Jesus, as your word come to me today. In the name of Jesus, your word transform my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth right now. Open your mouth. Open your mouth and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, our eyes of understanding is enlightened. In the name of Jesus, within the within the few minutes that we have left, I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, open your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. The Bible said he will pray in tongues that defies himself. Right now, I want you to prepare yourself, edify yourself, that in the name of Jesus, as the word come to me, in the name of I receive it holy in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth and begin to pray. La Rosetta Namosha Kazubale, Libra Kazuta. Let's go to the bush. 
Mazuka ta la gada la gada la da bo se pre gada la gada la gada li karada la gada bo shuka pre gaze la gada bo shakaba li ba la gada la gada la gada la gada bo shuka pre gaze ketele in the name of Jesus la roka pa la gada la gada bo se pre gado na mazi ali ya logo da bo sha i kapala zula de garia zetele la raga da bo shuka pre gazu tole ya li ba la gada 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 la roko zuka pre gazu tole la gada la gada bo shikata in the name of Jesus la rozo to na Mo shuke pregadi ili kaprogo zubalega di elega da lega da bo shikate raga da lega da lega da lega da lega da lega da rebo shoko pre ili barozo to lega da bo su elega ria da lega da lega da lega da in the name of Jesus barogo zuka ba lega di elega da lega da lega da bo shikata in the name of Jesus le roko zupale li kareza to lega di elega da bo sha mazube lega di elega da lega da lega da la proko zuko to lega da in the name of Jesus as your Word come to us in the name of Jesus. We receive life. We receive life. Your word illuminates our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you praise and glory, O Lord. We worship you because you are always there for us. Anytime we call, you always answer us. We worship and adore you. We thank you because our heart, our mind is open this moment again to listen to your word, to hear directly from you. We give you praise and glory, O Lord. Be thou exalted, everlasting. Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever you are right now, I want you to put your hands together. Together, I want you to put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord as we prepare ourselves. Get your pen ready. Get your writing materials, your book, your jotter, as we prepare to listen to God's word this moment. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, I want to welcome us again to tonight's uh, Bible study. I believe you enjoyed uh, that wonderful session, prayer session uh, with Pastor Kunle Adeleke. Um, today, the 31st of March, uh, happens to be the last Wednesday uh, in the month of March. And we are uh, going to just run through uh, the last session on the topic, the miraculous. I believe that you've had a wonderful time since this series started at the beginning of March and so, so many miracles, you know, has taken place. Glory to God. Uh, even uh, in my personal life, uh, even in Love's Domain Family Assembly, uh, we've experienced a lot of miracles, a lot of them that, I mean, um, they're just they're just simply amazing. Glory to God. Uh, the truth is, God um, is a miraculous God. Is an awesome God. Is a powerful God. Is uh, a God that when you believe in His ability uh, and His capacity, there's nothing that He cannot do. Glory to God. So I believe that tonight, much more miracles are going to be taking place, and I need you to get ready. I need you to be prepared because your life is about to take a new turn. Praise God. Uh, once again, welcome from wherever you're watching us from. Uh, you're watching us from the UK, from Australia. You're watching us from um, Nigeria, from Shokoto, Abuja, Kaduna. Uh, we are aware that our Kuala Church, they're seated in that auditorium right now. Our Kuala Church, members of our Lagos Church, our family members and our partners from all around the world. You are welcome powerfully to tonight's uh, Bible study. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, let's quickly bow our heads and say a short word of prayer before we go into God's word. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. You alone are worthy to receive our praise. We thank you for all you have done in our lives right from the beginning of this year, especially the miracles that you wrought as your word began to come forth in the month of March. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray tonight that as your word begins to come forth, you will do much more than we expect you to do tonight in the name of Jesus. There will be healings. There will be miracles. There will be breakthrough in the life of everyone under the sound of my voice, irrespective of their age, irrespective of their status, irrespective of the part of this planet that they live. Miracles will take place in their lives in the name of Jesus. The Bible says your word is light and is a lamp unto our feet. Our desire tonight is that your word will bring light. It will bring illumination 
solution to every area of our life our finances will receive light our marriages our health our ministries our career academics relationship i mean every area of our life will receive light tonight from the word of the living god oh we thank you father lord i release myself to you as a vessel speak through me tonight to your people let your word come from my mouth like uh, uh, like uh, uh, make my tongue like a pen of a ready writer let my let those words come out of my mouth with precision and accuracy into the life of everyone under the sound of my voice thank you heavenly father we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in jesus mighty name we have prayed let somebody say louder amen all right wherever you are you can go ahead and just put your hands together for the lord uh tonight in quality church jam your hands together for the lord and if you're watching this in your living room probably with your friends and family you can jam your hands together for the lord our god is an awesome god hallelujah glory to god once again i welcome us to tonight's bible study it's going to be an awesome time uh in god's presence um tonight i want to take a little bit of my time as we conclude on this particular series the miraculous um if you remember last week wednesday uh we talked a lot about faith we talked a lot about believing we talked a lot about the words that come out of our mouth and two wednesdays ago we took time to look at our fear and i told us that fear what fear does to us is that it just circuits the power of god and i made us realize that we have not received the spirit of fear uh, but of love of power and a sound mind that is what we have received that's the spirit that dwells within us um i i also showed us how um god does not like to dwell in an atmosphere of fear it likes an atmosphere of faith and i remember i shared with us how when angels showed up shows up to anybody one of the first things that they say especially when they sense fear is that they tell that person do not be afraid because with fear we read from the book of first john chapter 4 the bible says with fear comes torment that's what happens fear brings torment to the soul you become incapacitated you become agitated you become worried you become depressed and all of those things when they begin to accumulate together uh, that's what eventually leads to people committing suicide praise god so i i i i want us to realize that fear is not something that we should entertain at any point in time in our lives and this final series of the miraculous i'm going to be showing us how to deal with fear because once fear is dealt with in your life all of those things that i've just mentioned will not find a place in your life and if you don't have any of those things that i'm telling you the atmosphere around you <clears throat> will become an atmosphere of miracles that's what automatically happens when you come to a point where you know no fear when you come to a point when you are not afraid glory to god when you come to a point where you're courageous you are bold remember one of the words that moses kept saying to joshua as he handed over the baton was joshua be courageous be courageous be courageous a courageous person is not somebody who is fearful glory to god I remember, excuse me, I remember um, this particular uh, stuff we used to read when I was in secondary school. It said coward die, cowards die many times before their death. And one of the reasons why cowards die is because of fear. You'll find out that there are even a whole lot of people who do, um, um, let, let, let me put it this way, evil in cults has not even happened to but because they already envisage that evil is coming their way they become fearful I, I don't know maybe you got what i just said evil has not come the bad things have not even happened 
but because they have expectation that something is going to go wrong because they have expectation that something bad is going to happen they begin to entertain fear even though fear itself has not even showed up glory to god and when there's fear around you i tell you whatever it is that god wants to do it becomes a big deal for god to do what he wants to do in your life because there's something about miracles and atmosphere that's one of the things we've learned during the course of this series when we examine the book of mark chapter 6 i'm just trying to do a little bit of recap for us in mark chapter 6 when jesus got to his hometown the bible says he could not do many mighty works the word could means he wanted to but he could not he tried he made an attempt but he could not why because of the atmosphere it was an atmosphere of unbelief it was an atmosphere of doubt it was an atmosphere of familiarity glory to god so because of that jesus could not so there's something about atmosphere and the miracles of god there's something about atmosphere and god being enabled oh my god i, I wouldn't have loved to use that word enable because god himself is enablement are you following me but the truth is as much as god is enablement there are atmosphere where god finds it easy to do what he wants to do if you remember at the red sea one of the things that moses had to tell the children of israel as they became agitated was that stand still the word still there is trying to tell the people that do not be afraid he said stand still because by the time you stand still by the time you're no longer afraid then you will see the hand of god you will see the mighty works of god in your life and if there's anything that the devil wants to do is to bring fear around you is to bring fear into your life glory to god is to bring you to a place where you begin to doubt god is to bring you to a place where you look and think uh, that maybe god is not interested in this particular matter and he may end up not doing what it is that i want are you following this tonight and one of the ways in which you deal with fear because once fear is dealt with then miracles find it easy to happen in your life are you following this let me show you this before i make progress before i, I mean go further jesus was walking on water and he was coming towards the disciples if you remember the story very well they had a crusade they just finished the crusade and jesus told the disciples that they should go that um they can come back for him praise god but the bible says he prayed all night and by the time he was done the apostles had not yet come back the disciples had not yet come back to pick him so what jesus did was to decide to walk on water to go meet the disciples on the IC, and the Bible recorded that it was in the middle of the night. So you can imagine being on a ship or a boat, as it were, praise God, and all of a sudden, you see, just going on the sea alone has his own fear. <laughs> Are you following me? Not everybody can, can go on, on ship, on cano, you know, and all of that. A lot of people are afraid of the sea. The sea itself already has his fear now you now imagine yourself in the midst of the sea in the middle of the night then you see an image <laughs> walking towards you on the water and the image appears looks like that of a man praise god a lot of things will cross your mind is this a ghost is this you know mommy water praise god <laughs> mommy now they saw the image that was coming and fear gripped all of them they were scared <clears throat> Because even though a lot of them have been fishermen all of their life, they have never seen such a thing happen before. So they saw the image and they were scared. They were afraid. I guess they were holding one another. What is this that is coming towards us? And the first thing that Jesus said to them when he says that they were scared, were afraid, he said, do not be warned. Do not be afraid. Can you see that? jesus even knew that if fear was around that place there's a lot of things that could go wrong are you following this so he said do not be afraid then peter who had a little bit of courage among them 
said to Jesus, and he said, Master, if it be you, he said, bid me to come. And Jesus opened his mouth and said, what? He said, come. You know, I love a particular preacher when he was talking about that particular story. You know what he said? He said, when Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus did not say, Peter, come. He said, come. Now, you see, when, the, when Peter stepped out of that boat, he stepped out on the strength of the word that Jesus spoke. Jesus said, come. So that word come was able to sustain the feet of Peter on the water. That was what happened. Now because Jesus did not mention the name of Peter and say Peter come. All he did was say come. What it means is that all the 12 disciples could as have well stepped out of the boat on the strength of that word and walked towards Jesus. But I'm sure it was fear. Fear gripped them. They could not go out. Praise God. But Peter stepped out. And at the moment he stepped out, I'm so sure that there was no iota of fear in his mind. There was no iota of fear in his thought. He said, if Jesus said, come, then I'm going to go to him. So he stepped out of the boat onto the water on the strength of the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he began to walk towards Jesus. Oh, are you following me tonight? So, at the point when he became afraid was the point when he began to sink. The Bible says that Peter began to notice the boisterous winds. And don't forget that Peter was a fisherman. So, he knows what is obtainable on the high seas. Glory to God. They've caught shark. They've caught whale. They've caught all kinds. He knows the kind of dangerous animals that are under the belly of the sea. And you see, even though the Bible did not show us, there is a possibility, who knows, that maybe there was a, you know, you know how sharks come, praise God. You just see that, that V figure, that, praise God, that shark tail begins to circle around you. There's a possibility that there was a shark around that place and Peter saw the shark. But don't forget that when he stepped out of the boat, one thing he was doing was that his eyes was focused on Jesus. And because his eyes was focused on Jesus, the strength of that word was boosting him on towards Jesus. But the moment he took his eyes off Jesus, then the Bible says he observed, he observed the boisterous winds. He realized all of a sudden that, wow, I'm actually walking on water. Something that Archimedes principle and the princip principle of flotation said is not possible. When he realized that, fear stepped in. And when fear stepped in, guess what happened? The Bible says Peter began to sink. And that's why it's very important. Oh my God. If you're a Christian listening to me tonight. And at one point in time or the other. You entertain fear. Or fear comes into your life. I need you to always open your mouth. And say to yourself. Again and again and again and again. That I have not been given the spirit of fear. But of love of power. And a sound mind. Come and say to yourself again. I have not been given the spirit of fear. But of love of power. And a sound mind. I do not entertain fear. I am not afraid. I am the son of the living God. I am not afraid. Not for one more day. I am not afraid. The spirit of God lives within me. Greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. I am not afraid. Fear is not a part of my life. When you say those things again and again and again, then all of a sudden you begin to see faith rise within you. To counter the fear that is in your mind. Oh, are you following this? Now, let me quickly show us where we're going tonight. Praise God. Because I, I, I want to make it practical as much as possible. For us to be able to deal with fear. And I'm telling you, fear is one serious issue. I mean, serious issue. A lot of people have fear for different things. A lot of people are afraid of the dark. <clears throat> Some people are scared that they will go broke. <laughs> Praise God. Some people are scared that they will fall sick. <clears throat> Some people, every time they <clears throat> enter into a bus or a taxi or public transport, or maybe even their private car, there's that fear of, maybe I'm going to have an accident and die. People are afraid of different things. Glory to God. Some people are afraid of cockroaches. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Especially the flying ones. Amen. Praise God. People are scared of different things. 
But how do you overcome fear is what I want to show you tonight. Glory to God. Because once fear is eliminated from your life, I'm telling you, there's no limit to what you can become. There's no limit to what you can achieve. There's no limit to how far you can go. And I'm telling you, there's no limit to how far God himself can perform the things that he wants to do in your life. There's no limitation when you get to that realm where there's no fear in your life. At that realm, anything is possible for you. Oh, are you listening to me? Let's open to that popular verse of scripture that most people, most of us, while growing up, we learned to memorize. You know, we always we memorize it. Praise God. But as much as we have memorized it, a lot of us have not really taken time out to dwell on that scripture eat it and let it become a part of us glory to god and that's the book of psalm psalm 23 psalm 23 one of these days god is going to allow me i, I trust god to allow me to take a teaching on psalm 23 psalm 23 is so loaded glory to god the lord is my shepherd i shall not want there's a translation that I read sometime. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I want. I have everything that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. Everything that I need is available. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Glory to God. But you see, I, we're, we're not here to read the whole of Psalm 23. Praise God. But when we get that belief, God will allow me to take. And I'm going to dwell on each verse in psalm 23 because in psalm 23 there's a whole lot of depth are you following me as short as that psalm is as popular as that psalm is that psalm is so loaded and we have maximized just little of the scripture that is in psalm 23 but tonight our focus is on verse 4 of psalm 23 now look at what david said he started with the lord is my shepherd he started coming down then when he got to verse 4 he said yea he said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death now before i read the next statement now every time i read this or every time i've had to even from when i was young every time i i had to read the law i mean uh, uh psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd every time i get to verse 4 he said do yeah do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i always have this imagination of you know how how does the shadow of death really look even from when i was young and you see as a young man praise god the best description of the valley of the shadow of death that came to me based on what i have seen was thriller by michael jackson praise god i mean it's very it's very i mean it will interest you when thriller came out i think 1985 or thereabout praise god 1984-85 praise god i mean the video was everywhere i mean it was scary for us at that time i watched thriller of late and i'm like okay so this was what i was afraid of i like ah, this i mean it's, it's so funny praise god but then you will i mean you'll be so scared especially when you know those guys were almost clamping down on michael jackson and that lady then all of a sudden michael jackson too tall then i'm like i was like oh my god this girl is dead <laughs> praise god so for me that was the the best description of the value of the shadow of dead as at that time and it will interest you that even up until now when i think of the value of the shadow of death thriller comes to my mind <laughs> even right now it comes to my mind you are surrounded by fear you are surrounded now i don't know what the value of the shadow of death may mean to you but i just showed us what it means to me or what i picture that it looks like you are surrounded by fear you are surrounded by i mean creatures you're surrounded by situation you're surrounded by circumstance that look so fearful situations that you know that if something does not happen something supernatural does not happen you know that there's a high chance there's a possibility that you will be taken out or oh, are you following me 
Now, like I said, I don't know what the value of the shadow of death means to you. It could mean uh, the economic situation of the country that you live. It's clamping down on you. It's clamping down on you. Your finances is not rising again. It keeps going down. And yet, you have a wife as a man. You have children. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That you're surrounded. You're surrounded by fear. There's so much fear all around you. David said, don't I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. A place where fear is the natural response. Or should I say that again? A place where when any human being is, is what? Is a place, the natural response in a place is fear. You are fearful. You become scared because you're surrounded by fear. But look at what David said. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now look at what he said. He said, I will fear no evil. Oh my God. I will fear no evil. I'm surrounded by death. I'm surrounded by fear. I'm surrounded by situation. I'm surrounded by circumstance. But David said, I will not fear. I will not be afraid. I will not be moved in the midst of the situation. I will not be moved in the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. And I began to ask myself, why will David not be afraid in the valley of the shadow of death? Now look at what he said. He said, for you are with me. <laughs> oh my god that, that's the key right there that's the solution right there that's the key right there that's the solution right there he said i will fear no evil for you are with me he was trying to say that even though i'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death david said i will not be afraid and the reason why i will not be afraid is because i am conscious of the fact that there's somebody that is with me and that person is god almighty now let me show you this quickly because it's very important that i show you this because see, when you read this and you don't take time to really dwell on it and meditate on it, praise God, and be able to, you know, one of the things that helps you as a believer is when you read scriptures and you're able to relate it to your own personal life. Are you following this? Now, the psalmist said, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? He said, I will not be afraid. He said, because God is with me. Now, don't forget that when the psalmist was writing this particular psalm, it was not like God... Um, was somebody that you could see. Are you listening to this? Now, this is very important. He was not like God was somebody that you could see. He was not like David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He wasn't like when David looks by his side or at his side in the valley of the shadow of death, he will see God physically there. Because God is a spirit. No man had seen God at any point in time except the one who came from him. And that's the person of Jesus. So what was Sammy, the psalmist talking about? That for, for you are with me, that is why I would not be afraid. What it means is that everywhere David went, he carried a consciousness that God was with him every step of the way. Oh, I don't know, maybe you got that. It was not like David was going through the valley of the shadow of death and he was seeing God by his side. Because no man had ever seen God at any point in time. So what David was talking about was the fact that he carried God in his consciousness. He was conscious that God was with him. He was aware that God was with him even though he was in the valley of the shadow of death. Oh, I don't know, maybe you got that. 
Because you see, every time you and I, when we find ourselves in situation and in circumstance, if I have met people who because of their troubles, who because of their trials, concluded that God had abandoned them. And I'm sure you must have come across some people, maybe a couple of people, who think or even say it out boldly. That because of the troubles that they are in, that God had abandoned them. Listen to me. Don't forget this. That God, the fact that God is with you does not mean that troubles and trials will not come against you. Oh, did you hear what I just said? But you see, you need to carry a consciousness. Just like David carried the consciousness. That God was with me. That I would not fear. I will not be afraid. That though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid. Why? Because you are with me. There was a consciousness. There was an awareness on David. In the mind of David. In the spirit of David. In the soul of David. That even though this place is a terrible place to be, but God has not abandoned me. God is still here with me. God is still with me. Oh my God. And you know I love the three dimensions in which God functions in our life as New Testament believers. Oh God is upon us. Oh did you hear what I just said? Oh God is upon us. Then he's not just upon us. He's watching over us. And he's not just upon us and over us. Oh God is with us. And you see he's not just with us oh god is inside of us so what it means is that as a new testament believer i carry god everywhere i go and the fact that i carry him does not mean i will not encounter some valley of the shadow of death but the awareness oh did you hear what i just said the awareness the consciousness the knowledge the awareness the consciousness that god is with me gives me boldness gives me courage Oh, gives me hope. He gives me faith to be able to go through the valley of the shadow of death without any form of fear. Oh, did you hear what I just said? Because you must come to a place as a believer where you, how do I put this? Where what you do not see becomes more powerful than what you see. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I think I need to say that again for somebody to hear. You need to come to a point as a believer where what you do not see becomes more powerful than the things that you see. I, I'll say that one more time. You need to come to a place as a believer where what you do not see becomes more powerful than the things that you see. Don't forget the definition of faith from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that you have not seen. You have not seen it, but yet you know that it is there. So, because you have faith and you believe in the unseen, there's nobody that can talk you out of believing the fact that the unseen is real. Oh, I love the word of God. In Romans chapter 1, I think verse 16 or thereabout, Paul began to talk about how the whole world came into existence. That we understand that through the invisible things, the visible things were made to appear. Even all the things that we see came into existence from the invisible. The microphone I'm holding was first conceived in the mind of somebody. I, I, maybe not this particular one. I mean, even this particular one, praise God. Whatever brand it is, praise God. Somebody conceived it. They, they had a picture, a mental picture of how they wanted the microphone to look like. It was first in the realm of the invisible. And they now brought it from the invisible into the visible. In other words, the invisible creates the visible. 
Oh, I hope somebody is getting this tonight. The invisible created the visible. Now, if the invisible created the visible, then the invisible is more powerful than the visible. So, if I can't see God literally, and I believe in the invisible, because our God is the invisible God. He's the omnipresence God. He's the almighty God. If I believe in that invisible God, and I find myself in a situation, listen to me, when you get into that situation, you have seen that situation already. The one you carry on your inside, the one who is with you, the one who watches over you, that is invisible. He is able to turn that visible situations all around. Oh my God, miracles are happening in the life of somebody right now. I feel like speaking this word of prophecy over the life of somebody. You are in a mess right now. I'm speaking to somebody right there. You are in a mess right now. And it looks as if there's no solution. It looks as if there's no hope. But listen to me. As a result of your tuning in to watch this broadcast tonight, there's going to be a turnaround. Oh my God, I hope you're saying amen where you are. There's going to be a turnaround. There's going to be a turnaround. There's going to be a turnaround. In that situation, God is stepping in and there's a turnaround for things are going to pick up. Things are going to become better in the name of Jesus. Oh, I hope somebody said a loud amen. Well, let me quickly show us something in the book of Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 6. Glory to God. Now, what I want to show you is just to buttress what I've been trying to show us. Because, you see, fear will not allow God to do maximally, let me use that word, what he wants to do in your life. And the only way you can overcome fear, there may be several ways in which you can overcome fear. But I'm telling you strongly from scriptures, this is one of the ways to overcome. It looks as if there is no way for you right now. But you see, you are just so calm. You are just so relaxed. And the reason why you are so relaxed is because you know that you know that God is with you. In fact, Romans chapter 8 verse 31 has become so real to you. Paul said, what shall we then say to all these things? He said, for if God be for us, he said, who can be against us? And I need you to know as a New Testament believer that God is never and can never ever be against you. God will always be for you. He will always stand with you. God is always on your side. No matter what the devil is doing or trying to do, God is always with you. God is always for you. Now Paul said, if God be for us, who can be against us? What can be against us? What is that thing that can come against us? There's nothing that can come against us. For God is with us. Oh, there's this old song that we used to sing way back, way back, way back in Akure. God is with us. God is with us. We know God is with us. We know God is with us. Oh, God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. We know God is with us. We know God is with us. We know God is with us. us. Yes. You need to say that again and again and again to yourself in the midst of storms. In the midst of trials. You need to say that again and again and again to yourself to reinforce your belief. God will never leave you. In fact, the promise he gave is that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if I know anything about God, by two immutable things, it was impossible for God to tell a lie. If God says, I'm never going to forsake you nor leave you, I'm telling you, he will not forsake you. And he will not leave you, no matter what it is you need to go through. Even if it's the valley of the shadow of death. And the consciousness of that empowers you in the moment. Glory to God. Now, 2 Kings chapter 6, because of our time, 
Let's quickly read. Second Kings chapter 6 and um, <clears throat> let me start reading uh, from verse glory to God. Glory to God. Let me start reading from verse 12. Now, and one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha. The prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, Go and see where he is, <clears throat> that I may send and get him. Now, there was a background to this whole particular story. Praise God. The king of Israel, <clears throat> you know, will plan a particular strategy. Praise God. And it will be revealed on the streets. Praise God. Then somebody had to come to tell the king, You know what? Because the king was wondering, is there a spy amongst us? And somebody came and said, sir, it's not, it's not a spy. But there's a man called Elisha, who is a prophet of God. And the words that you speak in your bedroom, your inner chamber, as you are whispering it, is hearing it outside. And the king was like, seriously? Then he said, go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, surely he is in Dutton. At this particular time, the prophet Elisha was in Dutton. Now verse 14. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. Now I hope you are following what is happening here. The king said they should go look for where Elisha is and bring Elisha. And when they discovered that Elisha was in Dutton, then the king sent chariots, he sent horses, and a great army. And when they got to Dotan, what they did was that they surrounded the city. Now, all they were looking for was one man. <laughs> but they knew the capacity of that one man. So the king sent a whole army. Now, look at what happened. And when the servant of the man of God <clears throat> arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And the servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? Now, they came at night. They surrounded the city by night. Chariot, soldiers. The Bible calls them a great army. That means the king deployed battalions of soldiers to go bring the prophet. Now, in the morning, the servant of the man of God woke up, maybe wanted to go take a leak or something, but he got outside and discovered that ah, there are soldiers everywhere. And the soldiers that are everywhere, they're not looking for anybody but my master. And he knew there was no way they would take his master, that they would not take him. So he ran back to the prophet and he said, Alas, he said, and alas, my master, he said, the city is surrounded by soldiers. He said, What shall we do? Now, you see, the what shall we do is not really like asking, What shall we do? It's like we are doomed. <laughs> it's like we are finished. We have been surrounded by a host. Oh my God. I don't know. Maybe you can relate this to your situation. You may have been surrounded by an host right now. You may have been surrounded by situation and circumstance right now. But listen to me. There is a position you need to be even in the midst of the crisis. Even in the midst of whatever it is that may be going on in your life. They were surrounded by soldiers and the, so the servant was asking. He said, Master, what shall we do? Now look at verse 16. So he answered this Elisha's response. He said, do not fear. Can you see that word again? He said, do not fear. That means don't entertain fear. I mean, <laughs> do not be afraid. Don't forget all I've been saying since. That an atmosphere of fear chokes the power of God. He said, do not be afraid. Then he now made a statement that looks similar to what the psalmist was saying in Psalm 23 verse 4. Look at what he says. He said, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The prophet said to his servant, he said, hey, cool down, calm down, don't be afraid. He said, the people who are with us 
are more than those who are with them. You know, we're saying something in the car when we're coming now. I'm trying to remember it. Praise God. Uh, <laughs> you know, I want to walk by want walk by gun. Praise God. KPK. Co ah, you know, oh my God, I can't remember those things. <laughs> what about God? As in the number of people that are with us, there are so much. So you don't need to be afraid. And, and I guess when he said that, I guess the prophet, the servant of the man of God, looked around and was like, where are the people you are talking about? I mean, <laughs> how many people are really with us here? How many? I can't see them, sir. I can't see them. Now look at what happened in verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. Now what did he see? He says, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Did you see that? The servant was saying, Master, you are saying there are a lot of people that are for us. There are even more than those that are against us. But I can't see them. In other words, they are invincible. Oh, did I say something about the invincible earlier? You must come to a place as a believer where what you don't see is more empowered, more enforced in your mind than the things that you see. Because out of the unseen comes the sin. Or oh, do you understand what I'm talking about? What you don't see is more powerful than what you see. Oh, the prophet said, the servant of the man of God said, I can't see them. Then the man of God had to pray. He said, God, open his eyes. And when his eyes was open, he began to see into the invincible. And he saw that where Elisha was, there were chariots filling up the place. And they were not just chariots, but they were chariots of fire that surrounded Elisha. In other words, Elisha was surrounded by unseen forces. And these unseen forces, they are more than the forces that are in the natural that are coming against Elisha. Oh my God, child of God, son of God, can I say to you tonight that the one who is for you is more powerful than what is coming against you. The one who stands with you, the one who lives in you. Oh my God, even the scripture consumes it. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The one who lives inside of you is more powerful than the one that lives outside of you. Than the one, the things that you see around you. The unseen is more powerful than the sin. He said, do not be afraid in the midst of that crisis. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody right now. In the midst of that crisis. In the midst of that trial. In the midst of that those trouble. Listen to me. Do not be afraid Pray because God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. The people that are for you, the God who is with you, the God who is for you, he is way, way more powerful than the forces of hell that are coming against you. Listen to me. A miracle is about to take place right now. A miracle is about to take place. Oh my God. Somebody, as we cross over into the month of April, by tomorrow, you are stepping into a new day. Oh my God, what am I talking to? You are stepping into a new season. You are stepping into a new day. You are stepping into a new season. You are stepping into a new chapter. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God, I feel the power of God so strong in this place already. Oh my God. Oh, I feel the power of God. The power of God is moving through the internet right now. Right there in quality church, I feel the power of God is moving. Oh my God, right there in your living room, right there where you are. Come on, take it, 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 take it. I feel the power, I feel the power, I feel the power. I feel the power, I feel the power, I feel the power, I feel the power. I feel the power, I feel the power. Take the power, take the power. Oh my God. There's a strong move of God in this place. And because the unseen is more powerful than the seen. You see, there's a way the unseen moves. The unseen can move through barriers. The unseen can break through limitations. The unseen can walk through all because you can see it. Oh, that's how powerful the unseen is. And because the unseen is right there, right now. And I believe you know who I'm talking about. Because the unseen is here right now. You might be as far as Australia. But the power that is here is moving through realms. 
and it's coming to you. The power that you that is here is moving through realms, is moving through dimensions, and it's coming to you right there in your house, right there in your home, right there in your car, right there in that public transport, right there in that public train. That power, oh my god, oh my god, that is it, that is it, that is it, that is it, that is it. Take the power where you are. You won't remain the same again. You won't remain the same again. For there's about to be a turnaround. See the spirit of the Lord. You know what God has been speaking to us? Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 27. He said, I will overturn. I will overturn. I will overturn until it is no more. Then when he shows up, whose right it is? He said, then I will give it to him. Listen to me. I stand there and I speak by the spirit of God. That there's an overturning in your life. There's an overturning. There's an overturning. There's an overturning. God is not going to stop overturning. Why? Because it's your time. It's your season. He said, I will keep turning it until you show up. I will keep turning it until you show up. And when you show up, I will stop turning it. Then I will hand it over to you. Somebody hearing the sound of my voice right now. It's your time. It's your season. It's your moment. It's your time. It's your season. It's your moment. It's your time. It's your season. It's your moment. It's your time. It's your season. It's your moment. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, wherever you are right now, why don't you go ahead and begin to pray? Oh, let me give us about a minute to pray. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Oh, right now, prayer is being steered on the inside of you. Oh, prayer is being steered on the inside of you. If you don't know the right words to say, uh, open your mouth and begin to speak in the Holy Ghost. Uh, oh, there's a steering around this place. Uh, oh, no more fear. No more fear. Yes, yes, yes. No more fear. Mandoroba shataraba. Regadaba shataraba. Radasha. Tarabara, Rogabala, Dasso, Preketelia, no more fear, no more fear, no more fear. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Oh, the miraculous is taking place. 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 No more fear, no more fear, no more fear in my life, no more fear in my life, no more fear in my life, no more fear in my life. Oh, Shatarabarabaya. Mantolo vasia ti ala goto sovodele. Reda no shokoto lo vreha siya na katala broda riasa. Mashondo lo hosa vakati ya shokoro bahay. Mantolo bari ya katasa toro da balahati ya koto. Mashatala tanda ragodo boroge diya diya. Mantile le lo sufoto rogo diya na mashikoto lo bari ya. Oh no mo fie, no mo fie. No mo fie, no mo fie, no mo fie. No more fear. There's a turnaround. There's a turnaround. There's a turnaround. There's a turnaround. Yes. 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 God is asking me to give this word of assurance to somebody. Oh, uh, it looks as if the situation is hopeless. Uh, but there's a turnaround. There's a turnaround. Yes. 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 There's a turnaround. 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 Take the power for that change. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Why don't you raise your hands wherever you are this evening and just wave it to the Lord. Our God is a walking, wonder-walking God. Our God is a miraculous God. Just wave your hands to him. Oh, and I need to tell you the fact that the episode of Miraculous is stopping today does not mean that the miracles have stopped. <laughs> oh, this is just to steer you. This is just to assure you. This is just to remind you. This is just to keep hope alive in you. Oh, that it's not over. Oh, this is just to assure you that irrespective of where you are, uh, God is still a miracle walking God. Oh, why don't you wave your hands to him and just thank him tonight. In quality church, wave your hands to him and thank him oh wherever you are watching us from your living room go ahead and say father i thank you oh say thank you jesus say thank you for tonight's word thank you for the words of prophecy thank you for the prayers thank him just go ahead and thank him thank him for the miracles if you know if you know if you are assured if you are assured of the miracles if you are assured of the healings oh my god there's so much happening in the realm of the spirit right now if you are assured of the miracles you are assured of the healing you are assured of the financial breakthrough go ahead and thank him go ahead and thank him you are sure of the academic success financial success go ahead business success 
success, marriage success, relationship success. Go ahead and thank him tonight. You are sure that you're going to carry your own baby in the next few months, in the next few seasons. Go ahead and thank him tonight. Go ahead and thank him tonight. He's a God of miracles. Oh, we bless you, Father. We give you praise and glory. We give you all the honor and all of the worship. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, we thank you for this moment. Thank you for how you started with us. Thank you for your word. Your word is light. Your word comes with power. The Bible says your word is yea and amen. <clears throat> Everything may drop, but your word will never drop to the ground. Everything may fail, but your word will never fail. Everything may go by, but your word will always come to pass. I will thank you for the word that you have spoken, declared over us in this season. For everyone who has followed true, for everyone who has received one miracle or the other, I decree and I pray right now, firstly, that the miracle that they have received remains with them in the name of Jesus. And that as we move into a new month by tomorrow, the 1st of April, I decree and I declare upon their lives in the name of Jesus that fire Father, much more miracles, much more miracles, much more miracles, much more miracles in the name of Jesus. Oh, we bless you, God. Thank you, Father. Just wave your hands to him and just give him all the glory tonight. Just give him all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. We worship your majesty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Oh, come and go ahead and jam your hands together for the Lord tonight, wherever you are. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Akure Church, in Lagos, in Kwale, wherever you're watching us from, from Kaduna, Shokoto, Abuja, Abia, Ebonyi, Odo, Ekiti, Kwara, Ilori, wherever. Just worship him tonight. Give him all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Praise God. We believe you have been blessed. We believe you have been transformed. And we believe that much more miracles have happened to you. And much more miracles are on their way into your home and every area of your life. Thank you for being a part of tonight's broadcast. I'm going to make this quick announcement on Sunday. Um, we're going to be having our services all over uh, our campuses, praise God, by 9 a.m. We're going to be having Easter Sunday, praise God. We do not have any special program for this Easter period, praise God. But on Sunday morning, we're beginning a new series, praise God. And you don't want to miss it, praise God. And don't forget <clears throat> that every uh, first Sunday of the month is always our thanksgiving sunday and also our native sunday so we come in our native attire and we rejoice and we dance uh unto the lord and a new series the foundation for the new series is going to be laid praise god so don't miss any uh of our services throughout the month of april either you're in akura you're in lagos or uh, in Kwale. And come this Sunday, praise God, I'm going to be live in Akure Church. I'm going to be live in our Akure Church on Sunday uh, for Easter Sunday. Glory to God. If you're anywhere or uh, anywhere near uh, the city of Akure, come on. I need you to come out and let's fellowship, with to fellowship together with the Spirit of God on Sunday in our Akure Church. The address remains opposite BT Wall, Elisha garage praise god that's where loves to be family assembly is in akure i need you to come out and let's fellowship together it's going to be a glorious time uh, a glorious time of service in the city of akure so we're going to be broadcasting from akure this sunday to all our churches and to all around the world the service time is 9 a.m i'm going to see you i'm coming with my entire family to the city of akure and i'm telling you it's going to be a glorious time in god's presence and interestingly pastor stanley okokenye is going to be joining us all the way from kuala in delta state for that service i'm telling you you don't want to miss it you don't want to miss it it's going to be amazing it's going to be glorious it's going to be powerful glory to god so i look forward to see you my akure family on sunday when we begin a new series hallelujah very quickly i'd like you to give your offerings praise god 
um the church account is on the screen i need you to give your offering your offering helps us to do what we do right now and helps us to even do more for the lord there's a whole lot to do especially in the time and the season uh, that we're living we need to be on our social media platform preaching and declaring the word of god we need to be everywhere i think just on sunday i was still discussing with the head of media praise god in a particular setting that we will need to begin to get on tiktok now praise god let's declare the word of god on tiktok I mean, everywhere praise god hallelujah so give your offerings tonight it is what helps us to continue to do what we do so i pray that as you give your offerings tonight, that God will make all grace to continually abound towards you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you so much for giving your offering. It helps us to continually do what we do. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. God bless you. I'll see you on Sunday, Akure. Love you all.